you say? A problem with the dessert, sir? I think that's pubic hair in the cake. Oh, oh my God. God. Silly circumstances, misunderstandings, and outright grudges have all contributed to these 10 times people tried to scam fast food restaurants. Part two, crying over missing knife. Popeye's chicken is the shiznit. An attorney from Mississippi had to undergo emergency surgery after choking on a piece of fried chicken from a Popeye's, and as a result, decided to sue the chain. Why would he sue the chain, you ask? Well, apparently, he blamed Popeye's and its employees for failing to give him a knife with his order at the drive-thru. Instead, he was given a spork, a hybrid utensil combining a spoon and a fork. The man claimed no one showed him how to use the device, so he was seeking financial compensation and punitive damages. Put it in your mouth. Instead of going back to the restaurant to have a chat with the staff, or, you know, taking smaller bites of food. However, he eventually dropped the suit, but not because he had a change of heart, but because of how direct people were online. As many people pointed out, who eats fried chicken with utensils anyway? Now that's a knife. Bony Nuggets. I want my McNugget dipping sauce, about, Szechuan Rick? sauce, Morty. That's what's that's gonna take what us all the way to about? the end, Morty. McDonald's chicken nuggets are a safe choice for a lot of people. When you're not sure what to get, you can always count on these trusty chicken bites to save the day. In theory. Oh, and one more thing. Ten-piece McNuggets. In May 2020, however, a Palm Beach man had a very different experience with the McNuggets. As he was enjoying his meal, he bit into something very hard and quickly experienced a sharp pain coming from his mouth. He was in a great deal of pain, and he realized he had broken his tooth on the foreign object. The culprit? A tooth, just shy of an inch long, that was somehow in the breaded piece of chicken. What? No way! According to Alexei Stolfa, he suffered from unbearable jaw pain, toothache, and a headache for the next few days. When he visited the dentist, he also found out that he had two micro cracks in his tooth, which led him to take McDonald's to court and demand $1.1 million. The chain is looking into his claim and has yet to pay one penny. The price was not right. Always delicious, Taco Bell. I just want to take time to say thank you for my family. Reading the fine print is always a wise idea, but one that is often overlooked. Quite the bummer, really, especially for this New Jersey couple who had to find out the hard way just how important a simple read-through can be. In 2019, the couple visited their local Taco Bell in hopes of scoring two $5 Chalupa craving boxes, expecting to pay $10 for their Mexican Fiesta fix. However, this routine fast food run quickly turned into a lawsuit against Taco Bell and their parent company, Yum Brands. Oh, come on! Why exactly? It turns out they were charged more than $5 for each and were asked to pay a new total of $12.18 before tax. Yes, horrifying, right? Drop the chalupa! Drop it! Drop the chalupa! Yeah, drop the chalupa! They sued the chain for false and misleading advertising and requested compensation for the time they had wasted driving to Taco Bell as well as the gasoline expended while using their vehicle. So they wanted justice to be served. Only they weren't served justice, but rather some humility. Taco Bell didn't have to charge them what was advertised because the commercial had some legal fine print with a prices may vary disclaimer. One inch too short. Everyone has had Subway's $5 footlong jingle stuck in their heads at least once. That thing is just so catchy. The whole premise of the jingle, though, was to get a 12-inch sub for five bucks. But as an Australian teen with a tape measure and too much free time proved, Subway wasn't being 100% honest with its customers. This whole adventure started in 2013 when the teen posted a photo of a Subway footlong next to a tape measure, showing the sub falling a full inch shot of its 12-inch mark. I eat three every day to help keep me strong. And everything went downhill from there. He probably had no intention of starting a three-plus year lawsuit and for it to become one of the most controversial revelations of the decade, but that's exactly what happened. 
It wasn't long before attorneys from around the country started measuring their own subs, only to find them all shorter than advertised. This almost left Subway with having to pay over $525,000 in legal fees after promising to make their breads a more uniform size. No matter what you may have heard, size matters. The proceedings dragged on for years until early 2016, until a judge finally threw out the settlement, claiming it was inevitable for some sandwiches to be shorter since bread tends to change shape when it bakes. Missing Sprouts how intelligent do you have to be to take a food order? Mistakes happen, especially when you work at a fast food restaurant. Politely asking them to remake your food is one thing, but suing the entire chain is a whole other ball game. That's the step California resident Heather Starks decided to take when she tried to take Jimmy John's to court for false advertising. In 2014, she ordered a sandwich at her local JJ's that was advertised online and in store to contain alfalfa sprouts. However, she was instead met with the ultimate disappointment, a sproutless sub. Oh, give it a good hope. Mm. Starks was none too pleased, and instead of simply asking the employee to add the precious sprouts to her sandwich, she filed a national class action lawsuit for intentional misrepresentation, negligence, fraud, and the list goes on. The company settled the matter by paying $385,000 for attorney's fees and administrative expenses, $5,000 as compensation for the missing sprouts in Starks' sandwich, Freaking Jimmy! Jobs! as well as vouchers of $1.40 for each customer claiming they too were injured by the lack of the vegetable, which rounded up to $725,000. Extra Loss Value Meal Extra Value Meals make McDonald's the smart choice for dinner. I'm glad we're smart. Me too. McDonald's extra value meals have been a part of our lives for over three decades now, giving us deals on meals that are hard to refuse. Now, how would you feel if we told you that there wasn't actually any value in those meals? In 2016, a brave citizen from Chicago, Kelly Killeen, ordered a breakfast meal at her local McD's that was composed of two sausage burritos, hash brown, and a medium coffee for a total of $5.08. A pretty sweet deal, if you ask us. That is a morning McRap. It's different. But she decided to do some quick math just for the sake of it and came to the conclusion that her meal could have been even cheaper. Indeed, had she ordered all the items separately, her total would have been $4.97. Scandalous. She brought a lawsuit against the chain for consumer fraud and deceptive business practices. Here she comes to wreck the day! Again, it was pretty hard to take her seriously, especially since it was such a small amount, and a United States District Court judge ended up dismissing the case for the sole and unique reason that McDonald's never hid anything from customers. The prices are posted right there on the menu, and customers are free to use their eyes and judgment to decide if they want to go with the extra value meal or not. A high stakes suit. I got the job. Steak and eggs. Steak and eggs. In 2017, Queen's resident Chu Fen Chen felt like it was her duty to set the record straight with Dunkin' Donuts for the true contents of its Angus steak and egg sandwich. She accused the chain of a false, deceptive, and misleading advertising and marketing campaign since the sandwich didn't have an actual cut of steak as promised, but rather a regular beef patty. Feeling blindsided by this lie, she took Duncan to court, demanding not only a court order to stop the chain from inaccurately describing, labeling, marketing, and promoting its breakfast sandwich, but also monetary damages as she noted that the sandwich is sold for 50 to 60 60 cents more than the other sandwiches on the menu. Don't mind if I do! In her defense, the commercials did make a pretty big deal about the steak component and mentioned it multiple times. But still, one quick look at the ingredient list, which is available to all customers, is enough to clear them of any blame, according to Duncan, at least. Is that your sandwich? As of today, the suit is still ongoing and no verdict has been handed down yet, but it has led to many in-depth discussions about the definition of the word steak. Fake tuna. So how many of these did you order? Five. 
five footlongs. It was a good deal. Probably one of the most talked about food scandals so far this year, the Subway tuna salad has caused a lot of uproar in the world of fast food. You've most likely heard about the whole fake tuna fiasco through an article published by the New York Times, highlighting what the fishy mixture truly contained, or rather doesn't contain. Indeed, after some testing, the lab wasn't able to find any fish DNA from five different species of tuna in the chain's tuna salad, which led to plenty of speculation. In January 2021, the California lawsuit alleged that Subway's tuna wasn't made of tuna at all, but instead a mixture of various concoctions. Lamb and tuna fish? Maybe you like spaghetti and meatball? It also alleged that the chain was mislabeling the product, calling it 100% tuna, while it might not exactly be that. These accusations obviously lit the internet on fire, and people started to turn against Subway, siding with the DNA testers. Try Fat Burger from now on, you get yourself a double cheese with fries for $2.95. I like the tuna here. However, Subway stood its ground and affirmed that the tuna it used was real, and it's only because of the cooking process that detecting the tuna DNA DNA becomes hard. Further testing, this time done by Inside Edition, proved that the New York Subway sandwiches did contain real tuna, proving all allegations to be false. Not so happy meals. A happy meal toy reminds people of a sweeter time, a simpler time. Even though happy meals make the kids and the company happy, it's not everyone who's as enthusiastic about them. Antonio Bramante, a resident of Quebec, Canada, and a father of three young children, used to be a regular at the chain and would often bring his kids with him on his visits. His problem with the chain? The placement of the Happy Meal advertisements. Since they were deliberately situated at children's eye level, his children would always, without fail, start begging for a Happy Meal to get a new toy, and he would feel pressured to comply. In addition to being right there in the children's faces, the toys are also often linked to popular film releases, which entices kids even more. Will somebody get the kid a Happy Meal? Bramante said he ate McD's at least once every two weeks and that he had spent hundreds of dollars on Happy Meals. Because there's a law in Canada that prohibits advertising to children under 13, the suit was actually declared valid. And as part of the settlement, McDonald's now has to use images instead of physical toys in the displays and place them above images of other Happy Meal offerings like books. I am not a Happy Meal right now. Cheaper soda? Say no more. Give me a uh, liter of cola. It's been more than 20 years since Burger King was sued over a 20 cent difference, and it's still just as hilarious today. In her lawsuit, the woman explained how, at the Burger King closest to her house, a large Coke cost 89 cents. But if she walked a little further, she could get the same thing for only 69 cents at another location, a whopping 20 cent difference. So instead of walking the extra two blocks to the other Burger King to get her discounted soda, she decided to sue the chain because why not, right? Humans, we've come for your freaky floats. What's the magic word? She was asking for $100 as compensation for the distance she had to walk to get her hands on the cheaper soda, which was a rather laughable matter in court. In fact, Burger King won that lawsuit so easily, no one from the company even had to show up, and they didn't have to pay a dime. Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? While this was not the first time, nor would it be the last, that Burger King was dragged to court, it was definitely one of the most ridiculous and memorable ones the chain has seen. Stick around, just tap or click another great video, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad.